Our next guest is Kenny Loggins. Kenny Loggins has sold more than 25 million albums worldwide and has won two Grammy Awards. His songs have left his musical imprint on the soundtrack of our lives. Over the last four decades, his chart-topping songs have included This Is It, I'm All Right, Footloose, Danger Zone, and so many more. In addition to his string of successful recordings, both solo and as a member of the famed duo Loggins and Messina, Kenny became the first major rock star to dedicate himself to recording music for children and families. His album, Return to Pooh Corner, remains the best-selling children's album for the last 20 years. In 2016, he released his latest children's project, the book Footloose, Moondance Press, an imprint of Quattro Publishing Group USA on October 17th of 2016, and inspired by his 1985 Oscar-nominated Grammy Award-winning Song of the Year. With us now is Kenny Loggins. Hello, Kenny. Hi there, how you doing? Doing very well. Years ago, we actually met in person, and I don't know if your team uh, shared this with you, but you performed at the Westbury Music Fair and you were kind enough to meet some of us uh, in the audience backstage. And I remember telling you, thank you for writing um, and singing uh, Pooh's Corner. And my son, Andrew, now is getting married July 1st. And I used to sing that to him all the time. So I called Andrew and I was like, guess what? I said, I'm going to get to talk to Kenny Loggins. And he goes, oh, he goes, he's my karaoke song. And I said, you're singing Pooh's <laughs> Corner? And he's like, no, he's singing uh, Danger Zone, right? So I laughed, he and I, he and I had a great laugh. And the other funny thing, and I'm sure people might say this to you um, sometimes when they're singing that song, I always thought it was, I went to the danger zone. So I'm like, I I've, I've went that. to yeah. the danger zone. Andrew's like, mom, it's highway to the danger zone. But anyway, so from, from my family right. to your family, um, I just wanted to tell you, thank you so much. And I'm sure that, you know, yeah. That has been one of the best-selling children's albums of all times. It just keeps going. That's what you call an evergreen. <laughs> you know, I had a feeling when, when I uh, came up with the idea that, to do a children's record that that it would be. I wrote I wrote in a book that I wrote, Unimaginable Life, that uh, it would be the biggest-selling record of my career, and and it has become that. People just absolutely love you, Kenny, and you have changed so many lives in so many ways. Another interesting thought, too, is that uh, your work with Michael McDonald. So I got a chance to um, watch something about how you went to his house and how you helped with his career. And I grew up in Florissant, Missouri, and he grew up like one town over. And uh -huh. so for all the people that you've worked with, you have must have really enjoyed yourself so far. Has the journey been as sweet as we Think that it's been for you? Well, uh, yeah, I think mo for the most part, yeah. Um, if you if you ignore managers and record companies, <laughs> it's been great. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you're just enjoying the music for the music, uh, at what yeah. age? At what age did you start? Like, did you did you start playing first, or did you start writing first? Like, what was the process for you when you started? I I practically did the two at once. Um, I was taking guitar lessons and I learned uh, a, a song from a magazine that was the quintessential folk magazine called Sing Out back in the day. I was probably a junior in high school and wow. um, I learned a song called Blowing in the Wind, the Bob Dylan song. And I had never heard Bob Dylan sing it, but I learned it from the magazine. And that that day, once I learned that song, I, that day I went and tried my hand at writing and wrote my first song. Well, and you know that song too, where it goes to the part where it goes, blowing in the wind, the answer is blowing in the wind. Is you've always been known for being someone that cares about our environment uh, around the uh -huh. globe. Is that, do you feel like as a young man, that's kind of where it started for you? Is that you wanted to write songs that would maybe help our environment and celebrate the best of the world and what needed to be done? I wish I could say yes to that question, but, um, no, I was, I was writing love songs uh, right from the beginning. And that Dan, Danny's song was a song that I wrote about my brother. And um, that the environment issue would come and become a part of my paintbrush. So, but um, was not the uh, underlying motivational force that made me write songs. I, okay. 
it was really Conviction of the Heart, the song I wrote from On Leap of Faith that really launched me more fully in act, actively into being an environmentalist. Yeah, that was it's absolutely a beautiful moment. Um, you're known for many things, whether it's your children's albums or your environmental albums or your movie themes. You have something new that's coming out that is going to be available in record stores, and it's some of the best movie themes, both side A and B. Uh, and you pressed vinyl for that. So what right. is what is that right. project about at the movies? Well, we'd never we'd never put all the movie songs together on one compilation. And uh, when we heard about the record store day coming, uh, we said uh, my team and I said let let's do this in vinyl, and have this be something that helps promote record store day. Uh, and so that's where that all came together. Was that just to put all those movie songs into one place. Do people come up to you, Kenny, and do they sing your own songs back to you? Like the themes, especially like, you know, whether it's Caddyshack or whether it's Top Gun or whether it's Footloose. Do people just like walking down the street be like, Kenny Loggins, and then like break out into song? Not, not only you, really. Only me? Not, <laughs> not so much uh, uh, with that. Although the Archer, you know, when they started using Danger Zone as a running joke in Archer, uh, yes. I've had a lot of younger people come up to me and go, Danger Zone! <laughs> <laughs> that's about the only singing I get to hear. Well, I love this story, too, about when they told you um, about Caddyshack, and they said that it, like, it was this little animal that was going like, to like pop up, and you're like, and then what was that, what was that process like uh, working on that? Because that seems like that was a lot of fun. Yeah, no, I came in at the 11th hour. The movie was almost done. I, the version that I first saw, uh, didn't have an ending. Rod, Rodney went. They went back out on the golf course and filmed Rodney's last line, his ending of the movie. And um, let's see what else. Oh, it didn't have the. It didn't have the puppet in it. Didn't have the gopher. So yeah, when John Peters told me that these scenes here we're going to have a, a hand puppet in, I thought that's stupid. <laughs> but it, it turned out, it turned out to be a pretty damn smart thing. And I also uh, did some research and I was reading about your experience with Top Gun and that you had actually wanted to write um, a different theme for a different part of the movie because you thought you had a better chance. And then what happened with that? Well, I, I originally wrote playing with the boys for the volleyball scene because in, in Hollywood, that movie was what's called a cattle call. All the top songwriters and, and performers would go to a private screening of an early cut of the movie to try to write something special for the movie. And it was obvious that the opening scene was going to be, everybody was going to try and get that theme. And uh, so when I saw the volleyball scene, I, I turned to my co-writer and I said, this is the one, this is slam dunk because no one's going to write for this. And it worked. I, I got playing with the boys in that scene. And then while I was in the studio recording, playing with the boys, I got a call from Giorgio's office saying, you know, that they needed me to come in. The people, they, they originally thought they were had Starship to sing, Mickey Thomas to oh. sing that song. And then um, the lawyers screwed up that deal. So I just stepped in and sang Danger Zone. And the rest for that is history. Um, and Footloose is another one that um, you have themes from that on this new vinyl that you're releasing. Right. Um, um, what is it? Uh, Heaven Help the Man and Footloose. Yes. Both from that. Oh. Who is that? Say hello. <laughs> they want to be. Phone. They want to be on our show too, Kenny. Right? Just. <laughs> yeah. Right. Tell me oh, they can come on next time. Um, so so many things are happening in your world. You've got this new vinyl. Um, the other thing that really touched me that I just got to watch was your work with the San Diego Zoo and uh, with the proceeds helping Ronald McDonald House. I would like for you to share right. a little bit about that project with us, if you don't mind, because that to me is extraordinary what you're doing. It's it's been a great process actually. I originally teamed up with the San Diego Zoo to help promote a children's book that I wrote about, uh, which we called Footloose, but it was really about a, a dance party that animals had at a zoo. So that tied in with the zoo. And then in the process of working on that, they told me about this private sort of uh, closed circuit TV channel that they've created called Zoo TV, and it's initially for children that are stuck in a 
children's hospital somewhere. And so they have this channel where they get to watch animals being fed and taken care of and raised and all the different nuances of each animal. And um, I, th I thought it would be cool to write a theme song for their channel. And so I got together with uh, Josh uh, Bartholomew and Lisa Harrington, who wrote uh, Everything is Awesome for the first Lego movie. And we wrote a song called The Great Adventure. And it came out really great. And one thing led to another. So we decided to release it and share the profits with the zoo. And I'm sure they were very um, thankful for that. And they still are very much thankful for that. When you have won awards, and I know that the awards are mean something, but maybe not as much as the reward you get when you see the smile on somebody's face or when you're performing for a large crowd and they're dancing, you know, for you personally, right. what are some of the most tender moments that you cherish, you as, you as Kenny? What do you cherish the most during the journey so far? Wow. Um, well, I, I think it's all of the above. I, the, the connection that happens, you know, I miss so much the performing for a live audience. We, we've really lost out on that this year, and I know the audiences wish that there was more going on. I understand there are more acts going out at the end of this year or the beginning of next year than have gone out in one time period than maybe ever before. Uh, it's going to be a crowded room. But that, that connection that you make and that vibe that happens between an audience and an, and an artist uh, is really something important. And of course, as you mentioned, uh, the one-on-one -on -one situations in a hospital or, you know, a Christmas thing. Um, but you know, I'm just I, I'm just grateful that I get to sing for a living and that I, I've had this incredibly long career. You know, it's gone on since I was 22. The music really does, your music really is the songbook for so many things. It's the music that people play at their weddings. It's the music that, you know, people play uh, at their, it sounds funny, but even at their funerals, you know, your music really is the American songbook for so many of our special moments in life. And so many um, people look to music when they need healing, when they need inspiration, okay. when they need that hand to hold on to. When your music makes people know that they're not alone. We played it all day today in our green room, Kenny. And, you know, sometimes there were moments that people were crying. There were moments that people were dancing. There were people that were laughing. People from all different ages, you know, whether it was, yeah. you know, and it was just, it's powerful. And I want you to just know that. Like, I don't know if it's many times that people just sit down and tell you, thank you, you know. I know people yeah. say they like their music, but it's cool. So even behind the scenes today, I should probably, I'll probably email you guys some pictures just to show you like what your music does oh, good. on an everyday kind of vibe, right? right? Or when you hear it on the radio and the wind's blowing through your hair, it just uplifts somebody's spirit. And you do that. You wrote that. You created that. You played that music. Um, not to get too ushy gushy, but I, I love you. I really do. I love you. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so the guitars that you're playing now, is there a certain, you know, guitar that you always go to that's, that's your baby? Or do you have a variety of different sounds you like? Um, I, I like a variety. And in the studio, I record with lots of different sounding guitars for the, whatever the song is supposed to be about. Um, I've always loved guitars. Uh, when, when other kids had pictures of cars on their wall, I had pictures of guitars. So it's just been part of my life since I was about 12. And so what kind do you play? Do you, is it a Martin? Is it a Les Paul? Is it a Takamini? Is it whatever you pick up? Like what, what do you like the best or? Well, well, my, my favorite electric guitar right now is a Duesenberg, okay. which is a German guitar and it's handmade and it's a precision instrument for electric guitar. Nice. What color? And, uh, what color is it? Um, well, I've got about three of them. I've got oh. a black one, a white one, and a red one. <laughs> and I've got one in the other room. Actually, I could show it to you, but I'd have to leave the the, oh. the show to do that. So okay. Maybe next time. <laughs> maybe next time. Um, or you could just email me a picture. Um, so, huh. 
so the so when you're uh, creating now, where do you find that moment? Is it like the words or the melody that come down? Like, is it a computer download that you're just feeling something? Like, what's your process now? Uh, well, um, when we wrote uh, um, Great Adventure, Josh and Lisa and I, um, we were in their studio and we started with a drum groove that Josh said, what about this? I, that's, that's great. And then I just started freeform making up melodies over the drum groove. And um, one thing led to another and it, it just sort of became a song. We, we had the direction that we knew we wanted to write a song that would be something that little kids would wake up to in the morning in the hospital that would be a positive statement and very uplifting for them. And, and uh, so that. as a, a sort of emotional guide, we used um, a song by the American authors. This is gonna be the best day of my life. So you really set that tone. And so the, that connected with the line we had was, are you ready for the great adventure? Yes. And, and to be brave, uh, right? It is it brave like a yeah. lion? It's, right. Yeah. yeah. That really struck me when that line came through. That was a direct message to a kid who's facing difficulties. To be strong like a tiger, brave like a lion. Leave the fear far behind. Take my hand. I'll give you mine. Um, that's when we knew we had it, when we got those lines. And I said, okay, we got it on the run now. Let's just keep going. Even adult kids like me, Kenny, um, it's helpful. <laughs> kids of all that ages, was good. <laughs> the great adventure, uh, Kenny Loggins. What are you most looking forward to now, Kenny? I know you have a beautiful family. Um, you have wonderful things and friends. Uh, is there anything in particular that you're looking forward to during this year? Well, I've been working on my memoirs and it's really been become a fun thing to do. I've, I've come in contact with a lot of funny stories from the past and we're interviewing the parts where I don't remember quite. We're interviewing old friends from that period of my life. Uh, drummers, uh, guitar players, road managers, um, people that were integral to important things happening for me, and uh, just sort of kick, kicking around memories and bringing bringing things in for the book. Um, that's been fun, and I, I do want to get back into writing. Uh, there's an animated project that I've been a part of developing. It's going to need some music, so I'm I'm committed to writing about 12 songs for it. Wow. Yeah, wow. My hope is to write, write them with Josh and Lisa. Lovely. Lovely. I did get to see a clip of them. Um, I guess it's your home, maybe. Was it your home studio that you were doing it at? Um, where they were playing, do you have a baby, like a baby grand piano there or something? Like a, do you have like oh, instruments oh, in your home or? You saw the, you saw the video. Yeah. Where did you, right, where right. did you That's make that? That's my living room. Lovely. We cut that in my living room. That's my piano and. Um, Josh is to my left uh, playing guitar. Yeah, I really enjoyed that so much. And I hope all of our viewers uh, get a chance to go and uh, check that out. And yeah, it was very warm and inviting and welcoming, um, just like this conversation. And I cannot thank you enough, uh, Kenny Loggins, for spending this time with me and making one of the best memories of my life. Uh, it's just been just so joyful to, to spend some time with you, to really just kind of hang out, if you will. Like you're having a root beer. Um, I, I'm ready to go <laughs> get a root beer. <laughs> All right. Uh, right but, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I thoroughly, really enjoyed spending time with you. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you'd like to share? I know we talked a little bit about so many things, but anything else before we wrap? No, we're, we're good. You know, that's uh, I wanted to talk to you about Great Adventure and, of course, the, the vinyl release of the At The Movies vinyl coming out. And those are the primary reasons why we're promoting, but just to reconnect. Yeah, it, it's nice. And uh, I, re I do remember that first moment I met you, and it's it's nice to meet you uh, here, even though it's not in the 3D, or, 3D world. It feels like it. And those 12 songs, I cannot wait to hear them. I'm, I'm like already, my, my mind is like thinking, my heart is racing and my ears are getting ready. So congratulations on oh, all good. your success uh, and continued love and peace to you, Kenny. Thank you so much for being Thank here you. today. Okay, happy journeys. Thank you, you too. Okay, bye my friend, bye-bye. Bye-bye.